Saxon Advanced Mathematics Lesson 7D5. Last time we talked about Kramer's rule, that new fifth way of solving a system of equations. And I'll tell you what, I'm still riding the high of that lesson. I love that lesson. It's so cool. It's so interesting. It's so fun. Lesson 75 is going to take us in a different direction, but it is equally cool and interesting. It takes us back to our study of permutations, right? The different number of ways that things can be organized or chosen or arranged. A combination is a special kind of permutation. So let me write down the definition. combination is a permutation where order does not matter. In all of our examples with permutations, it did matter, right? Order did matter. We talked about putting, arranging books on a shelf. We talked about arranging letters in two words. Order mattered in all of those permutation problems. Combinations are things like choosing a team, of people, once you're chosen to be on a team, the order doesn't matter. You don't have to like stay in the same order the whole time you play whatever game you're playing. Or another great example is uh, dealing a hand of cards. Right? You don't have to keep your cards in the order they were given to you. You can mix them up. So order doesn't matter. And these are two examples of that. And we'll get more when we get into this. Um, Remember that, oh, here's the formula, it's super easy. To find the combination of n things, take an r at a time, I'll write that down over on the side, that's the same as we've used, but n things, take an r at a time, we find the permutation of n things, take an r at a time, and we divide by the at a time number, Okay, n equals the, it's n things, let me not put equals, it's n things taken, oh, I can't write, r at a time. Okay, so let's do the first example and you'll see what I mean. Ready? Let's see how many examples there are. There are three, my favorite kind of lesson. Ready? You need a story. Let me read it to you. Ready? In how many ways can a committee of five students, that's like a team, a committee of five students be selected from a group of 12 students? So that's 12 students taken five at a time. Five students to be selected from a group of 12. So that's 12 students taken five at a time. So this is our N and this is our R. There's an arrow, okay? So first we find the permutation of that and then we'll divide it by R factorial. Okay, permutation would mean that, and I like to draw the picture. I think the pictures help a lot. Um, is there replacement or is there not replacement? Well, we can't replace human beings yet. Cloning is possible. Um, so, in our, we have 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8, right? That would be the permutation. So, it would be 12 times 10, oh wait. 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8. My hand went crazy. Divided by R factorial. R is the at a time number. So this would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right. And at this point, we're going to use 
uh, hand calculation. Sorry, I meant to go back and put this in a puffy cloud of knowledge. Okay, so let's see what we can cancel out of this. Four and three against the 12. Five and two against the 10. 11 times, let's do 11 times 72. That sounds like a fairly easy math problem because I can just write 72 and then 72. So that means the combination equals 792 ways that we can form a committee of five out of 12 students. That's the right answer. Okay, so this calculation is pretty straightforward, right? We just find the permutation, which we've been doing for a good long time, and divide it by that number. We just have to carefully identify our N and our R. Let's do another 75.2, ready? Let me write it again. The combination of N things taken R at a time is, the, is equal to the permutation of n things taken r at a time divided by r factorial. Yay. Oh, this is a fun one. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna draw the picture so you can see it better. We have a circle and there are seven points around the circle. They look pretty evenly spaced. Two, three, four, five, six. Seven. They are numbered. You look at this and you think, what does this have to do with what we were doing? And then there's a triangle. And the line goes from one to five, and then from five to six, and then back to one. All right. There are seven points located on a circle as shown. Brumpf. How many different triangles can be drawn using these points as vertices? Hmm. All right. So it's seven points taken three at a time. All right, because it takes three points to make a triangle. And it is true. Like as I look at first, I think, well, there've gotta be some points where it won't work to draw a triangle. But if I look at this, I go, no, it's fine. Any number of, like we could do seven, six, and five. Any three points will make a triangle. So that means our N equals seven and our R value equals three. So the combination of seven things taking three at a time equals the permutation of seven things three at a time divided by three factorial. That's our formula, right? Now we have to figure out this. Seven things taken three at a time. Okay, once again, I like to draw the picture. Um, seven, six, five. Obviously we can't use the same point twice, so we know there isn't replacement. So it's this divided by three times two which is this, right? And so this cancels against this. Remember, we're multiplying. So this equals 35 triangles that can be drawn from these seven points on the circle. Hmm. All right, good to know. Um, I didn't write this down, but I guess let me write this. For step one, we find the number of permutation. And for step two, we divide by R, which is the at a time number. Right? Seven points taken three at a time, that is our R number. All right, so if you want to break it down into a couple of steps, 
there they are. Again, we have a formula that we can use to do this, but I really much prefer, I always like to draw the picture of the things, if it's at all possible, right? It just makes me feel Mm, more confident. It just makes me feel like I understand what's going on a lot better. It's not just numbers flying around. It's me saying, okay, we have seven points to choose from, then we have six, then we have five. That, I just like the way that feels in my brain. Example, 75.3. Oh, we're already on the last one. Ready? How many different five card hands can be dealt from a deck that contains 52 cards? Okay, so we can write this down, 52 cards taken five at a time. That's what the problem says. So we know that N equals 52 and R equals five. The combination of 52 items taken five at a time equals the permutation of that same set of numbers divided by five factorial. Okay, let's draw out what the permutation looks like. One, two, three, four, five. There's the five cards. Right? And this is gonna be a really big number. We're gonna divide it by, we don't have to put the one, do we? It doesn't change anything. So we would use a calculator to simplify that. That's ridiculous. And the number will be 2,598,960. Grab your calculator right now and make sure that <clears throat> you can calculate that whole thing. Okay, pause if you need a little more time to work it out. Pause me and come back when you're done. Okay, now that we've had a chance to see how this works, I wanna go back and just show you a little bit more about the formulas. This is the same thing I've written. Right, this is what I told you. The number of combinations, you find out the permutations and then you divide by the at a time number. But we can also take this piece of it and we have a formula for that, don't we? We know that P things, N things taken are the permutation the number of ways that n things can be taken r at a time, this is the formula we learned for that. But now we're saying divide it also by r factorial. So we can add that in, right? It's this piece of it. So if we want, we can say that the combination of n things taken out at a time equals, and then we can use this whole thing as our formula. Okay, so this takes the formula for permutations and shoves it into the calculation for combinations. So this is kind of a all-purpose formula. It's useful if your numbers are really big. That's what it's good for so that you don't have to draw it, try to draw a picture. So this is kind of the ultimate formula for combinations because it rolls our formula for permutations into the adjustment that we have to make for combinations. It's the all all in one formula. So if you want to put both of these in your notes, I highly recommend. Okay, guess what? 75 is done. Thank you, goodbye.